Hey, this is Ryan Ray, and I'm going to be looking at the differences between stereo and multi-output settings for the drum kit designer within Logic. Now, this will also work with other software instruments that have these setting capabilities, so other multi-output instruments will, will work in a very similar way. Um, but basically, the, the difference is this. Stereo selection takes everything within whatever sound you're working with and routes it directly to the stereo output channel. You don't really get to mess with much in it. It's just kind of going there and it's convenient and it works. With multi-output settings, you can actually change how things are routed. You can do individual processing, individual mixing, and other editable things to individual sounds as they're routed to whatever their respective output is. So the drum kit designer works really nice for this because it's it's common that you might want to put on some processing or adjust the mixing of a particular sound or a particular element within the uh, drum kit. So I'm going to explore how we can mess with this and see how some of the library presets are already ready for this kind of editing. So I have an empty project within Logic. Uh, this station is currently running Logic 10.2.4 but other versions will allow the same kind of working as long as it has the drum kit designer set up in this way. So I have an uh, empty track, software track, and I'm going to go into the instrument plugin section and select the drum kit designer. And I'm going to start with the stereo option first. So it does everything you'd expect. The drum kit designer plugin opens up in a default setting. And when we look at the channel strip, we can see that we've got the drum kit highlighted showing it's active and then its output stage is going to the stereo out. When we look at the mixer, we can see that it's reflecting the same information. Stereo out is right here. We can see where that is and that's actually making it to our output stage, which is either our monitors or headphones or whatever you're using to get sound out of your computer. So with this setting, we don't really have much that we can do with the particular drum set. We just play our sounds, and then it goes directly to the stereo out, and that's it. Any processing or um, editing you do, mixing and all that, will affect the entire drum set as it's currently set up in this way. If we go to the instrument plugin again and select multi-output, notice that everything stayed the same except for one small difference, and that is down here. This area right here below the meter is showing us a minus and a plus that have shown up. That's because you can actually start adding in the individual auxiliary tracks that are being routed with the multi-output setup. So if I hit the plus, we'll see that a new track pops up and its input doesn't say drum kit just like this. It's actually showing drum kit 3-4. That means it's taking the output 3 and 4 from the drum kit designer and routing it to this particular track, and then this is making it to the stereo out. We can do it again. Now we have drum kit 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc., etc. So we'll see that once we exceed that, they start just coming in like aux tracks, because that's essentially what they are. They're auxiliary tracks that are being controlled by this main one here. But this is going to allow us to start adjusting things individually. We can set different fader levels, different panning. We can put separate processing. All that kind of stuff will work um, coming from this one drum set. Now, the only thing that's kind of strange here is that now we have this big list of tracks within our mixer view, but not in our tracks area. So what if you wanted to say, automate some effect within the snare. Like let's say you, you wanted to do some individual processing of the snare. You wanted to put in uh, some reverb. So we'll use the send. And let's say we want to send to a, a new bus. It's going to create a new bus here. And we'll say that we're going to add in some, I don't know, space designer reverb. Once I feed that in, we'll see that something like the kick is dry, but the snare 
has that reverb sound. You can see it, it's feeding this particular track here. So maybe you wanted the reverb to start triggering, you know, maybe on one section or something later. You could actually take this track and automate the bus send or something like that. But without it being in the tracks area, we can't really do that as effectively. So we might want to see that in this tracks area. So what you can do is select the tracks that are essentially the multi-output level of your drum kit designer. And you can either right click or control click. And we're going to say create track. I'm going to minimize the mixer. And we'll see that now those tracks show up in our tracks area. And that might be kind of a mess if you think about it. That's a lot of stuff to have to deal with. But they're all routed in exactly the same way. So what I'm going to do is select this, select that, and I'm actually going to make a summing stack. So shift command D brings up the dialog and I want a summing stack as opposed to a folder stack because I want to route everything to a new bus that will then go to the output. So I'll hit create. And now we'll see that all this stuff is here. We've got our summing stack up here. Now it looks like just one track, but within it is a bunch of individual tracks. Open up the mixer and we'll see, I can do the same thing. I can expand that by opening up the disclosure triangle. And now we see that all the tracks within it no longer go to the stereo out, but instead are routed to a new bus. And we'll see that the summing stack track shows that the input is that bus number, right? So it's sending from there and going in here, and then that's reaching the output stage, the stereo out. So this is just kind of rerouting things into one track to kind of keep it convenient. So you can actually do uh, processing on the entire set by using the summing stack track, or you can do individual track processing and editing, mixing, by selecting the individual. Now, if you want to make it look a little bit more pretty, you can rename it, call it drums. You can right click this thing, grab a new icon if you'd like. And if you wanted, you could even save your creation, open up the library and going into save, you can actually save this particular preset that you've made. Essentially, it's this channel strip setting. Anything you've done, any effects you've added will be saved to it, which is really nice. And you can recall it later as a user preset. So what's interesting is the process I just did here, where I selected a track, created a drum kit designer in multi-output mode and added those individual tracks and then created a summing stack from it. Well, this is essentially the producer kits presets. So if I hit this, create a new software instrument, just keep it empty. And if I navigate to the drum kits, producer kits, and then all these with the plus signs after them, if I click on one like the East Bay kit, we'll notice that it looks quite similar to what I've done up here. We see that we've got the preset name, we've got a cool little icon here, but then there's that disclosure triangle. Open that up and we'll see that this one actually has all the instruments routed and labeled and have their own icons. Definitely looks a lot better than mine here, which is just kind of generic. So that's one of the nice things about the producer kits is that they're already kind of pre-routed for you. If you open up the mixer, you can see that they even come with their own channel strip settings. They've done a number of things to sort of customize this particular preset and this set to give it that East Bay sound, whatever that may be, and any other one in this list of presets. So definitely saves a lot more time to use the producer kits to effectively get the same thing. But that's how you can work with multi-output settings versus stereo. The multi-output setup allows you a little bit more flexibility, customization, individual mixing and processing, as opposed to a stereo instrument, which really just gets you the control of the two channels and the entire instrument in one.